is iOS 18 bad enough for you to wonder about <laughs> Apple's long-term vulnerability? Are we invoking the Charles Barkley meme? Do we need to have an Apple dialogue here? I mean, I the uh, well, I have another. I was gonna actually bring this up later on. You have an email about uh, Android and Google and stuff along mm. those lines. And I feel like my instincts were right. It was time to go to Android, and I bailed too early. <laughs> um, yeah, iOS eighteen is is horrible. I mean, the I, I don't know that I don't know that this applies to the question, other than just to compl- everyone's talking about the Photos app. Uh, mm-hmm. They did weird stuff the Control Center, like my, my the whole connectivity panel. It's like promoting AirDrop, and you don't have actual access to things like Bluetooth. I had to like do all the individual ones. I saw. I mean, just, you it, and several other people were really upset about that particular tweak from Apple. Uh, I find the connect. I mean, this is one of the ironic things. I, I I had problems with the modem on on the Google Pixel. The connectivity on on I don't know if this is an I, iPhone 16 thing or iOS 18 is terrible. Like it, mm-hmm. it, the Wi-Fi is bad. The cellular connection when you like if you lose a connection in an elevator, it just doesn't reconnect. Like I have to turn it off and turn it back on. Another reason to be annoyed at, at the control panel uh, interaction <laughs> thing. Uh, there's there's some other feature or some other oh the emoji situation absolute disaster. They're cramming mm-hmm. all this other stuff in there. Uh, I don't know. I I, I I hesitate to draw a lot. Like Apple's had bi- bad iOS releases before. There's a lot of talk that they pulled basically everything to focus on this gen ai stuff which is a separate discussion and it does feel like lots of stuff sort of this got is neglected like the b team or c team putting together ios 18 right i mean i i don't know in the is apple focused on i mean what's the evidence though what, what decisions would they do differently that wasn't focused on short-term results I and mean, i guess you could make the case about the generative ai stuff like their, mm-hmm. their sort of approach and not doing their own large model in particular but it, it that's not it's that's not sort of an insane way to think about it. it it is but i guess a lot of stuff isn't always insane right it's like right. i could uh, yeah i can understand why you're for the right and medium term I mean, and they did the do deal. you know they they did put out the apple vision pro it might be a mistake but it's not like they you know it's not like they're they're just not doing anything um so but the all the pieces are in place certainly mm-hmm. like you have a long running run of dominance that's basically undergirded by risks and decisions that were made a long time ago and sort of cemented them in place. Yeah. I, the, the, I'm not ready to go there, but neither certainly am I, the, neither am I, but it came to mind. And I think you could make the case that they're not, like Apple hasn't produced anything new and great in a long time. And it's not about iOS 18. Well, you're the one who doesn't use AirPods to be fair, but well, (laughs) well, I would say AirPods. I mean, like that's a counter example that people always invoke, but the AirPods and the Apple watch are both impressive, but they're ultimately just iPhone. Yeah. They're iPhone accessories. That's right. Right. And they're um, Apple was smart to release them and they're both good products at least some people think the airpods are good products but they also that's my approach to the apple watch i understand that you like the apple watch i'm just never i've knocked I'm, every time i put one on for a few weeks i'm like yeah this sucks i don't want to wear but this. people <laughs> point to their success and it's like apple doesn't allow third parties to have access to certain functionality on the iphone so there's a real competitive advantage they're not playing on a level playing field in some yep. of those markets where apple has pushed forward at like where has Apple pushed forward over the last 10 or 15 years? And why should we believe that Apple has like the cultural and technical chops to capitalize if and when there's a paradigm shift in the next five to 10 years? That would be sort of the skeptic's case. Again, I'm not ready to really make that case. It's terrifying to bet against Apple, but I think there are fair questions to raise after the last 15 years. Well, so is Google now in our good graces that that they've uh, blown everyone's mind this week? They have blown everyone's mind. Um, should we just skip to the Google question here? Because it, we got this from Sarab. He says, hello, Andrew and Ben. I recently attended a physiotherapy assessment and received a hard copy printout detailing my biweekly sessions for the next five weeks. On the drive home, the thought of manually creating each calendar entry felt daunting. Once I got back, however, I decided to see if one of these new advanced LLM tools could help. Using Gemini Advanced on my Pixel 9 Pro, which Ben returned, 
I snapped a photo of the schedule and asked it to create calendar appointments for each session. To my surprise, it not only recognized all the session details accurately, but also added them directly to my Google Calendar. A process that would have taken me 15 minutes was completed in seconds. Out of curiosity, I tried the same with ChatGPT. While it correctly parsed all the session details, it understandably couldn't automate the calendar entries and instead provided instructions to add them manually, essentially no different from referencing the paper schedule myself. This experience underscored Google's current edge in certain areas. With its combination of TPUs, optimized AI infrastructure, in-house mo in models, consumer apps used by billions, and hardware like the Pixel 9 Pro, which Ben returned, Google stands <laughs> we got the apart. We got the message, okay? <laughs> He's such an Android guy. Uh, in contrast, Apple lacks comparable AI infrastructure and large-scale models. OpenAI doesn't have consumer hardware or widely used apps. Microsoft, Amazon, Anthropic, and others each face gaps in areas where Google excels. This raises an important question. Given Google's unparalleled, unparalleled position in AI right now, how might they mismanage this opportunity and risk losing their technical leadership once again? Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I mean the uh, the other thing that I will note is uh, I you know I mentioned one of the my favorite use cases for my brief foray with the Pixel Pro, which everyone it, I think this happened last year with Android. Everyone's like, just buy a Samsung phone, like just like all that edge stuff, like the modem stuff and all the things. They're like, it, it works better. The Twitter app works fine. So. I, I promise I'm gonna get another Android phone. Maybe not oh right boy. away. I just bought another one. <laughs> I'm getting a Samsung next. I'm, no, I'm getting a Samsung next time. No, th honestly, this my iPhone experience this time has been terrible. Like it, wow. it's it's not bad. Yeah, it's it, like um. So I, I'm open, but I also I mentioned I translate stuff all the time, and the Google like sort of when sort of like take a screenshot and then you can you can interact with stuff on the screen right there is mm -hmm. great. Um, and the uh so so. The yes, they have all the pieces. I I think the the big issue for Google was actually sort of captured this week, and it's less a um, which is they have all these incredible announcements. Their sort of new video generation model is amazing. It blows mm -hmm. Sora out of the water. It's kind of embarrassing how how much better it is it is than Sora. And Sora, meanwhile, it's this separate site. It's not even part of ChatGPT, which is probably sort of capacity issue. But like, then what are you actually bringing to the table? Like, like you don't have the distribution advantage. You don't have the, the consumer sort of zeitgeist. Like everyone knows ChatGPT. That's a thing. I've made the case that ChatGPT.com or which I think they bought chat.com. So it might change soon, but it yeah. is, it is, like that is the value in ChatGPT. You can make the case. Like, it's, it, is it actually the models or is it actually the consumer sort of mind share? Again, which is sort of a counterintuitive take and a little controversial, but I think there's there's something there. They don't have that for Sora. Like, so mm -hmm. why? What's even sort of the goal here? <coughs> Man. Um, and, and meanwhile, Google, Google just has this new product that's sort of blowing them out of the water. And everyone's like, oh, this is so much more interesting than ChatGPT's boring announcement of, like, ChatGPT search is yeah. now available to everyone. And, and that I'm revenge like, must have felt good for Google after the past two years of OpenAI upstaging Google uh, announcements. True, but <laughs> ChatGPT search being free to everyone is a big problem for Google. Like, like mm -hmm. the, you know, I think there's that, you know, we're, we're doing a good way of segueing to other question, but... Yeah, my default search is is in the vast majority of cases, eh, maybe not default search. That's putting it a bit strongly. I think I gave a challenge to you, try to catalog every time you use Google search in a day. Oh <laughs> it's God. like it's such an <laughs> astronomical number, you you don't even appreciate it. Yep. But there's a lot of times that I go to Chat GPT first. I took the Google app off of my home screen uh be, so I could add another chat app so i have now i have both quad and chat gpt are on the home screen i figured i need to give, give give quad sort of more more of a more of a shake uh mm -hmm. since everyone keeps raving about it but uh that's the problem for google is that's where they make all their money right they're, they're like the and that is less of a like VO that you get the vo cash from google search that's how and you get the willow cash from google search and so exactly that exactly that's a problem that's right and and this isn't a management issue this is more like a real disruption challenge which is yeah. 
a different technology comes along uh, and it's, it's not competitive with what you do on some aspects and, but it's, it is in others and it sort of screws with your business model. And that is, that's a problem. Like, like in chat and, and you know, open AI is going to work to build some sort of advertising model to fund this sort of free level and increase the rate limits and things over time. And it's going to be pretty crappy at monetization relative to a Google search, but for a chat GPT or for an open AI, it's fine because they don't make any money from advertising today. It's all sort of additive and they can figure it out for Google. It's not fine. <laughs> they, 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 if they're cannibalizing their core business, that is a problem, but that doesn't fit in like the, the engineering culture bits. I think we were talking about before because mm -hmm. that's just a, that's a business problem to be managed. And it might be, it's still unclear if they're going to fully manage it sort of over time, but you know, I'm pretty sympathetic to companies going through that challenge. I do have to give Google credit as someone who's been very critical of their management uh, that they are actually shipping this stuff. And the sort of morass and, 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 and slowness with which they sort of responded and the sort of layers of bureaucracy that, that you sort of heard about that these things had to go through that didn't just make them slow, but actually made the products bad. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's been actual real changes there. I mean, we'll, we'll see how this gets when it rolls out. I mean, hopefully, you know, we don't have to sort of rehash the, the problems with their image models and their, and their text models that sort of came, came up a year ago, but to the extent they fixed that, hopefully the, 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 they did get sort of the kick in the rear end because we do need, great engineering companies and Google's a great engineering companies and you got to let the engineers ship and right. to their credit, they are shipping. That is good news. They still face this business challenge, but yeah, like if you went back to 2020 and said, Oh yeah, Google has all these advantages and they're crushing it. Everyone would be like, yep, that's exactly what I expected. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the angst and perhaps going too far in criticism, but then again, maybe not was because they weren't fulfilling their destiny. They weren't doing what you expected of them for several years. They're sort of in the middle and Android should be the best choice, like in an AI world because right. of all these advantages. And what does that mean? Sort of in the long run, are they better placed than Apple? Yeah, they are. Uh, do, does Apple still have a lot of the advantages and the lock-in and the consumer mind share and, and all the sorts of things? Yes, they do. Can, can, can Apple recover? Can they have good enough models? They don't, you, the Apple doesn't have to have the leading edge model necessarily. They, right. you know, one of the big themes over the last year has been, we haven't had the big like GPT-5 sort of breakthrough but what we have had is a massive array of models that are GPT-4 level, but cost a lot less to create and a lot less to run. And, and it's interesting because there's a bit of an issue, I think, in the model landscape, which is the big payoff from doing a leading edge model is that model helps you create more efficient models. Mm -hmm. But that model never is actually economic to operate and run and you never make your money back. Like, so where, where is the incentive? Like there's a, there, there's almost a long-term concern about who's going to fund this leading edge model that everyone uses to make the efficient models that are actually make money in the marketplace. And, you know, OpenAI gripes about this. Oh, everyone trained their models using GPT-4 outputs, which is, as we noted, is a great irony given their, liberal interpretation of the use of other people's sort of uh textual outputs but yeah. you know it, it is it is an issue going forward but that's an advantage to apple like it's actually this might be a case where being a fairly fast follower if you have the places to leverage it and distribute it is a good place to be so we'll see to what extent they can sort of systemically take advantage of that yeah i mean strategically speaking on the apple side i think that they are well placed to sort of draft off of the leading edge market participants and just sort of capitalize on the progress without having to invest a ton up front al alongside google and open ai i would also say though and it isn't about ios 18 but just it seems like people hate the Apple intelligence product thus far, or at least are just wildly underwhelmed by the I Apple intelligence product thus far. 
And I think the efforts there could be indicative of just a more general malaise and lack of dynamism. Well, I mean, I think I think one example is like their whole image playground sort of thing, which, you know, Gruber made the case on dithering. Maybe this is just it's almost more of a demo app, but it does speak to, oh, we're going to we'll do like stylized output of things you generate it like it speaks to like a place of fear. Like we don't want to accidentally generate something that's good. Let's and not that's, upset the apple cart. That's Let's right. That, that's simple. not a good. That's not a good sort of like sense you want from a company. Like, well, let's not give you the cool stuff because you might do something bad with it. It's like, well, they well, think and especially bad. everything is about to change. I mean, that much is clear. And so, as far as skating where the puck's gonna be, it just feels like a question as to how capable and willing Apple is gonna be in the new era here. But they do have tons of advantages, and they have me locked in. I will not be getting a Samsung phone to run Google products over the next couple of years. Because I, I'm no, an Apple I, guy. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna no, I, I am I am gonna do it again sort of at some point, in part because and honestly I think this is even rel- relative to a couple of months ago when again, and I think some of the issues I had Maybe they were pixel specific. Maybe they were just user specific. The, like the mm-hmm. Twitter issue was a real one. Like it just went, like, w- w- which lots of people have said, I don't have that issue. So I, I don't know what was going on there. But, okay. uh, and the modem one was a real one. Again, might have been me specific, but, it, you know, just the, the, it, it was what it was. It, that there was good reasons for me to bail on that phone specifically. But as my usage of these AI products sort of, increases and my desire to use them more increases and i have to deal with annoying workarounds to interact with stuff it increases the salience of man i would like this to be more deeply Just built in seamless and easy yeah, yeah. And, and and my assumption is i would like it to be chat gpt or cloud but i am just gonna assume that the google alternatives are going to be better than the apple ones and that's starting to be a meaningful differentiator for me something that i need to think about because Mm -hmm. if i'm depending on these and using them and want to use them that's a reason to choose a different platform now again i'm hardly representative of the normal user but this has always been the theory of of android sort of in a pixel in particular in the long run is whenever we shift away to apps being the key paradigm and apple sort of advantages in that space to services being the more important paradigm it wasn't enough to have like native gmail incorporation you needed something more than that oh yeah the the email situation is kind of a mess too but whatever Mm -hmm. uh the ai though is is good enough and useful enough that that could be that could be the thing but it it, it, this stuff it does take time it doesn't happen overnight that's for sure Yeah, you're not the average user in 2024, but your preferences might. 